Hello and welcome to SDK TV, powered by Data Meaning and brought to you by Darren Homeblood. Today we're going to talk about a topic which will be useful in delivering rebranded microstrategy environments, as well as providing developers with the necessary tools to build dashboards that align with the standards companies have in place. But we're going to do so by adding custom fonts in MicroStrategy Web. Currently, the fonts available to MicroStrategy Web are deter determined by browser specification as well as the operating system they run on top of. After this presentation, you'll be able to leverage custom fonts in MicroStrategy Web. Custom fonts can be added in MicroStrategy Web through the use of the Web SDK. Once they are added properly, new fonts will be available from Web Preferences and in MicroStrategy Dashboards and Reports. Fonts are applied to HTML through the use of CSS by leveraging font face and font family. It's important to understand that different browsers will accept different font formats, so it's important that you leverage every format available so you cover all your bases as far as browser version and browser uh, type. It's also important to consider that your web application server may be may need additional configuration in order to serve some of these custom font formats. Specifically, I know that IAS requires custom settings to allow the font files to be downloaded properly. As I said, adding custom fonts in MicroStrategy leverage a font face as well as a font family. You can see here we use a font face block as an example and once we do so fonts are applied in MicroStrategy and it defines a font family which is then later available to be applied with, with preferences in MicroStrategy preferences as well as on the dashboards and reports. Fontface is supported in IE9, Firefox, Opera, Chrome, and Safari. So essentially all major browsers that were produced after 2009. With Fontface, web developers no longer need to adhere to any of the web safe fonts. They can instead include custom fonts which are downloaded from the web server and then consumed by the browser on the client side. Uh, you can also see this link at the bottom of this PowerPoint for some additional information on custom fonts. And these PowerPoints are always updated to my GitHub account so you can download them there. Now we're just going to go over a brief demo of how to get MicroStrategy to consume custom fonts. This is a fairly straightforward topic and we're really just going to need to create one plugin and utilize a XML file for the font names picker. This will configure MicroStrategy to render the custom fonts in the preferences when you navigate to them through MicroStrategy Web. And we're also going to need to place custom fonts within the plugin so they can be downloaded to the client. We will need to create a CSS file to define the font face. And then lastly, test in MicroStrategy Web. So first, you will need to go into MicroStrategy Web Customization Editor and create a plugin. Um, I've already done this. So we have a plugin, we have JSP style and a web and if. Uh, once we do this, we will need to create a font family CSS file and also need to, in the web and if, XML config, create a font name picker XML. Now, initially these files can be blank and I'll show you how to set those up in a second. So as I said, the font names picker.xml um, is how MicroStrategy Web allows you to define the fonts available from the preferences. 
So when you navigate to MicroStrategy Web Preferences, all the fonts available in this font style are defined within the font names picker file in the out of the box application. So if you want to see what this file contains, navigate to your web application and go to web INF. And from there you're going to want to go to XML and then config and look for font names picker.xml. So if we edit this file edit this file you can see it defines a shortcut list name with font picker and it has some shortcuts defined in them now if you look at the content of these shortcut blocks you'll notice that they correspond to the different line items that are available in the font list in the MicroStrategy preferences. So here we have shortcut description Arial Black. You know that's a pretty well known font. And you can see under there you have the attribute name style with a value of font family Arial Black. So if you know a little bit of CSS, you'll know that the font family is how you apply fonts in CSS. And so this is how MicroStrategy Web allows you to define fonts. Um, so what we're going to do is create with that new plugin where we've created a new font names picker file and we're going to open that up and edit it. So the font names picker, you can see here I've copied the shortcut list name and the ending shortcut list. Before we do that we also need to place our custom fonts inside the style and I've created a fonts directory and placed the different fonts in here. As you can see I have four file formats. Um, these were actually produced by using Font Squirrel and it converted a single font format into these multiple font formats. So You'll need to place your custom fonts within the plugin in the style directory in order to have them accessible to the web application. Alright, so once we create our shortcut list, we can copy one of these examples and start to fill out for our custom font the necessary content. So if we go back into our font directory, we have a font that's called Itilium Bold. So that's going to be the name of the font. And we're also going to want a feature ID. Go ahead and name it the same thing. <clears throat> now, the style and the font family, we're going to change from Arial Black to our custom font, Titillion Bold. And the value, we're also going to change to our custom font, Titillion Bold. So now we've created a font names picker for our custom font. So if we save this, our custom font would be available to the preferences in MicroStrategy if we restarted our server. But we're not going to do that yet. First, we're going to use our font family CSS file to define a custom font face. So if you saw in the PowerPoint, this is the demo, you know, font face block, so we kind of just need to build off of that. So our font face, if you remember, we defined that in our font names picker. We 
find our font family name. We're also going to need to define and these are going to need to be relative path to our font directory and the file name for that is going to be So this is now a single font format that we have added to our font face. We also need to add some additional formats and I'm actually just going to copy and paste those from another demo that I have. So this is what it will look like when you have all the different formats added. and Sometimes the order is important depending on the browser you're using. So I like to use this specific order. I feel like it works uh, the best. So once you've added each of the file formats, you can see that we have EOT, SVG, TTF, and WOF. Um, we have each one of those and we have, I believe, EOT twice and it just has a different format. Um, that's to fix a issue in IE. So once we have the font family CSS file configured, now we will be able to utilize this font family from MicroStrategy Web. So if we go back into our font names picker, you can see that we've defined font family, Pytillium Bold. And that's the font family that we have within the font base. So now I'm going to go ahead and restart the MicroStrategy web server. And give me a second for that. As I said, the fonts will be available to the preferences under font style. The custom font will be all the way at the bottom in the windings. And if you remove the out of the box font and add the custom font, and click apply. You can see that the custom font is now used. If you bring up your Chrome Developer Tools and hover over these elements, you will see inside the CSS our font family is now Titillium Bold. So MicroStrategy picks up the proper font family and applies it with CSS. So, in addition to being available from the web preferences, users can also access these fonts through dashboards. So, if you go to create a new dashboard, if you go to Create a new dashboard and add some, some text or a grid. You will see options to adding the custom font within the preferences in the dashboard. So we put create a blank dashboard and insert some text. Properties and formatting of the text box. Go to font. 
you will see here that Titanium Bold is available. So we're going to go ahead and select it and you can see that we are now using Titanium Bold as opposed to the out of the box Arial and if you view that element with the Chrome Developer Tools, you'll see Font Family, Titanium Bold. So as you can see, applying custom fonts in MicroStrategy is pretty straightforward. Uh, you'll just need to create a custom font picker, font names picker, and a font family CSS, and make that CSS file available to your MicroStrategy web application. Uh, you can do that in a number of different ways. You can either add a link to that on the default page in the web mstrweb.jsp or ASP um, or you can include this font base in custom MicroStrategy CSS files that will be applied to all pages for example the global CSS um, I just like to include it in a custom CSS file so it easily you know encapsulates my code um, as I said this PowerPoint will be made available to you and I will update my GitHub to include the plugin directory that will include the font names picker and the CSS and a custom font sample that you can play around with. Uh, feel free to post on the video if you have any questions or um, you know pull my GitHub code and make some changes and re-upload it. Thank you and have a nice day.